Anabola here and I am thrilled to be bringing you a video. I'm going to call this technique um, watercolor bleaching. I don't really know what else to call it. Anyway, today I'm going to be working with this uh, brand new stamp set from W Plus 9. It's called the uh, Beautiful Bouquet Dahlia. It is part of a uh, series that Dawn has been doing. And we're going to uh, heat emboss this on some watercolor paper. I'm working on uh, Canson Montevall watercolor paper. So I'm just inking up my stamp with some Versamark. I had used my embossing buddy to get rid of any static on my paper. And um, so I'm just going to take a second here to figure out where I'm going to place it before I push that down. And then we're going to heat emboss this in white. Um, you could heat emboss in whatever color you wanted. Just for this technique, I wanted something that was very monochromatic, very clean. So I decided to go with white because to me there's nothing more elegant than white embossing. Plus, you know, I still love watching it melt. It's like a little bit of magic. So I'm just going to hit that with my heat tool and then we're going to be moving on to the next portion. I will warn you this will only work with Distress Ink because it's made to work with water. Um, I don't, you could probably use watercolor markers to get the same effect, but I'm not sure how that would go on in the background. You kind of have to toy around with it. So I'm starting with tumbled glass distress ink, and I wanted a, a more like an ombre background. I wanted it to be darker up where the bouquet was, lighter toward the bottom of my card. So that's what I'm going for. I started with the tumbled glass, and then um, this is salty ocean. Just some really beautiful blue colors. Uh, I think that you this would be so fantastic to do like a card set in. Um, the next color we're moving on to is Blueprint Sketch, which is um, it's a really gorgeous blue. It has a little bit more purple. It's more of a blue-violet than um, the Salty Ocean, which kind of bears more on the side of a teal. Uh, but they all, is, all Distress Inks work really well together, so I had no issue blending them. The way I prefer to do my distress inks um, with my, oh, there's my little boo-boo. So I had re-inked them. <laughs> I had re-inked my ink pads right before I did this, and I guess not all of it soaked in. So I thought for one second I had ruined it, but it blended in okay. And then the second time I picked up ink, I just blotted off of my Ranger Craft mat. Anyway, what I was saying was, I, the way I prefer to do my distress inks is I go lightest to darkest and then darkest back out to lightest and I feel like this really saturates the paper and gets me really good blending. It's almost kind of like putting on your eyeshadow where you start with like a really light base coat and then start blending in your other colors. That's how I treat my distress ink, like my eyeshadow. So um, I'm just working my way back out. Um, this is more back to the salty ocean and I'm going down a little farther than I did um, the first time I did it, like the first time around, I'm, I'm just going bringing the color down a little darker. And then lastly, I'll blend it out one last time with that um, tumbled glass just for a nice finished edge. Here's the fun part. So this is just clean, clear water. I'm working with a two-inch round brush. I'm just going to take the water and put it right on to my image. And I'm going to let it sit for one second and blot it up. And the color totally comes up, and it looks completely cool. <laughs> um, man, I love crafts. Um, just techniques are fun. So basically, uh, because of the way Distress Ink works with water, I've seen Christina Warner done this, do this like a hundred times on her videos, where she like splashes clean water on there and then blots it up, and it pulls up the ink. This is the same idea, except we're keeping it really, really controlled because we're doing it inside our stamped image. So I'm, I go a little slower on the more intricate areas, you know, the outside of the leaves, but the inside where all of the petals are um, touched, it's one whole piece. I didn't nearly need to be as careful, so I was kind of just like slapping water on there and blotting it up until I had got, you know, everything up and we're working on the last final piece here. Um, I will blot that up and then we'll be good to go. I think this looks totally cool as is. However, we're going to do some other things that I feel like maybe take it up a notch. So speaking of those splatters that Christina does all the time, I'm doing kind of like the same thing. And then I just grabbed a little bit of a thicker brush. This is a four inch round to get some bigger splatters. If you want a really clean, pristine look, um, you can do that. You just have to be really, really careful if you have a more intricate stamp. See, and then here I thought I was done, and then that little corner looked kind of naked, so I wanted to give it a little a little something. I didn't want to neglect it. 
So we're going to move on to Copic markers. I will warn you before we do this that putting your Copic markers over embossing will color your embossing powder. They are alcohol-based markers. They are meant to be permanent. They will color right over it, whatever color it is. In my case, it's blue. Um, I could color the whole thing blue. And the embossing powder would not, or um, the heated embossing powder would not resist it. So I'm being really, really careful when I'm on the edges here putting in this shadow not to go over the white heat embossing. Not that it doesn't happen. It does because I'm not perfect. And <laughs> um, even when you don't mean to get it somewhere, it still does. We have a way to fix that later on. But I thought it would be super cool to do a drop shadow on this um, heat embossed image to help it kind of come away from the paper. So I started with my lightest, or I'm sorry, I started with my darkest color, and then I just picked three to kind of like blend out into the background. Um, you could do this without the ink blending. I wanted that ombre look, but you could go like direct to paper with your ink pad and have super intense color, and I think this would look crazy amazing. So maybe I'll have to try that at some point. Or if you try it, then please let me know. I'd love to come see it. Um... So here I'm just, I picked three colors and I'm blending out that shadow into the background. Now it's not going to be perfect. Um, it does look darker in the beginning, so don't get like too nervous when, if you do this and you feel like your shadow isn't blending. Uh, the paper gets darker with moisture, so give it a second to dry before you feel like it's not doing what you want it to do. So after I had put my shadow in, I'm going to go back into the flower image with a C3, which is a fairly light gray color, and I'm just going to add in a little bit of shadow to those images to help make them pop, give them a little bit of depth, so that this image really looks like it is popping off the page, even though it's completely flat. Well, completely flat minus the embossing powder. You know what I'm saying. So this is just, again... Even though it's just a gray marker, anywhere that I put it over, the embossing powder is going to color it gray. It's not going to be a true white, so I'm trying to be careful to avoid those edges. Um, but I did have found a way to fix it. So I have alcohol. This one is 91%. Usually the one they sell is like 75 Whatever you've got is fine. So I have a Q-tip. I dipped it in a very little amount of alcohol, and then I rubbed the t like I turned the tip to like push any extra moisture out and then I'm rubbing that very lightly over the embossing now in the beginning I'm being very ginger with it and then I noticed it kind of wasn't changing my <laughs> distress ink at all so I tapped I risked it I tamped it in the corner and realized that because um, distress ink is water-based and alcohol is not yeah it totally didn't affect my background whatsoever so yay but it will affect any of your shadows or shading that you put in. So be aware of that before you just go crazy haywire with that little Q-tip cleaning up all your stuff. I stamped the sentiment. Um, it's important to note, make sure your background is dry because Distress Ink is made to stay wet longer and it is uh, made so that you can emboss with it. So just do like a little test. Throw some embossing powder on there and see if it sticks before you try to heat emboss your sentiment. So that sentiment is from the same set, and I just mounted them together, stamped them down, white heat embossed them, and then I got out some um, sequins from Pretty Pink Posh. I have some clear and um, blue, um, light blue sequins, and that is pretty much the card. So I really love the way it came out. I think it would be super cute as a set, with or without all of the added detail. Um, so thank you so much for joining me today, and I hope that you guys have a wonderful day. I will catch you on the next video. Bye.